Welcome back. We're uh, working with the Sisala ETL framework and uh, let's start looking a little bit closer at the files. I'm going to start a text editor here and uh, we're going to open, a, uh, open up the folder so we can look at the different files that are available. So file, open folder, and it saves on the desktop. Sisla. All right, so here are the different files. Like I said, the one that actually runs things is called run all. It's a batch script. Um, and uh, well, uh, does a few things here. Uh, it uh, actually changes the code page here. Um, it's just so that you can actually use uh, file names that have uh, exotic characters in them. Um, otherwise, these are the ones uh, in, that are interesting to change, uh, at least those. Uh, you have the uh, system name, usually the system from where your files uh, originated, uh, or the source, uh, and in this case uh, it's the New York Police Department, NYPD, uh, what type of data, what type of source data uh, in particular, what's uh, vehicle data that we're looking at, uh, and what's the name of the target database in uh, SQL Server, it's called Traffic, uh, what's the name of the staging area in SQL Server, it's called Stage, and uh, where would we like to store our metadata? Uh, we could either, either store it in a separate database or together with the uh, staging information, or it could be in the traffic database as well. So let's, uh, for example, put it in the uh, data warehouse traffic. And uh, well, uh, the other things that it does here is actually just run the sisolator with uh, an input XML file, um, the type of XML file you're looking at, uh, which directive uh, it should use, and the name of the output file, the generated SQL. So uh, let's have a quick look at the directive here that it's using. Oh, and it's doing the same thing here for targets and workflows. But uh, yeah, the source there source directive. So let's click it. So this is just a list of the different Sisula files that it should process. Um, and each of these Sisula files are given the XML file uh, in a JSON format. Uh, so it can actually use parts of that file uh, to generate uh, that uh, final SQL code. So these are just the Sisulets then. So let's look at the source XML, and in this case, uh, we can see here uh, the source, it has a name, and this thing here uh, is uh, when you have something within percent signs like this, it's a variable reference. Uh, so in this case, this would reference uh, an uh, environmental variable called source. Uh, and if you looked at this run all, there is a, an environmental variable here that we set, which is uh, vehicle. So uh, this will be replaced by vehicle when you actually uh, run the generation. Uh, you uh, can also specify the code page of the file. What type of the, uh, is it a character, a wide character? Uh, what's the field termina terminator uh, of this one? There's also something called row length, uh, which you can set. It will use varchar max if you don't set any row length. Um, but for performance reasons, if you know that your rows are going to be no longer than 1,000 characters, this is actually a little bit faster than using the varchar max. 
Uh, you can have some sort of description here as well. Um, I just added the link to where I found the actual source files. Uh, uh, a source file can consist of one or many parts. So um, normally, if you have a comma-separated file, you would only have one part because all the data looks the same. Um, but uh, many times your files can look a little bit more exotic. Maybe it has a header and a footer, and in between those you find the actual data. And it um, could be the case that you would like to parse everything, uh, including the header and the footer and, and store some of that information as well. So you can do that with this framework. You just uh, declare more than one of these part sections. So the first part is named collisions. And this is the actual collision data. So I have to some way indicate now which rows in this text file uh, uh, contain this collision data. So this is basically a subselect, you could say, that selects the row from the raw table here that you are interested in looking at. And I say that if the row starts with uh, three digits, then this is collision data and not a header uh, or a footer. If you leave out this section, it will just grab everything and parse it, believing that it fits the description of this part. So a part has a number of terms. Terms later on get uh, translated to columns in a table in a database. So you could say that each part is a staging table and each term is a column in this staging table. So here first there's a term called occurrence precinct code, um, probably which uh, police district or precinct uh, that um, uh, should be the, uh, I don't know, responsible uh, um, for that area. Um, it seems like it's delimited by a semicolon and the format uh, of it is an int. Uh, as I said previously in the uh, other video, we wrote our own type checking um, function. So this uh, data here will be type checked against this format that you specified here, and you can find any rows easily that for some reason didn't pass the type checking. But you can still choose to either stop if you find uh, data that uh, didn't for some reason uh, fit the format or you can just uh, decide to ignore that data and load as much as possible anyway. So and here the next thing is a collision identifier uh, and uh, I can either here specify for a term that it has a delimiter or if I want to have better functionality uh, with respect to how I select parts of uh, what's in the, the file, I can actually use regular expressions as well. So you can either have a delimiter, you can have, uh, if you type pattern, you can specify a regular expression. Uh, or, and oh, I should say here, when you specify a regular expression, it's the capturing group, the thing that's within parentheses here, that um, uh, what goes into the actual column in the database. So this is the thing that you say has an integer format, uh, which looks like it's nine digits here. Then everything else here has uh, a semicolon delimiter with some different data types. Uh, there's a third uh, thing you can specify also. Instead of a delimiter, if you have a fixed length file, you can specify a size and say that I want eight characters, the following eight characters I want, or the following, and the following four after that, and the following ten. And you can mix and match these any way you like. So you can have delimiter, pattern, size, delimiter, pattern, whatever. Uh, you, you also specify if you want to, this is optional, a key uh, if you want to check your source data for duplicates. 
So in this case, uh, I have specified a key called measure time. Um, also, that it is a primary key. I believe that's the only type of key we, we uh, support right now. Um, and when you specify a key, you reference the different components of this key. So in this case, the key is a combination of the intersecting street, the crossing street, and the collision order. So I guess you can have the same intersecting and crossing street. So if you have more than one collision at that street, there is a collision order that tells you uh, in, what, in which order they appeared. So you shouldn't be able to have a duplicate uh, on this key in here. If you do, uh, the framework will tell you uh, w uh, which rows are duplicates. And you can again choose if you want to uh, load one of those rows and disregard the other ones. Uh, in this file, it also looks like there's some uh, metadata, probably a header or a footer. So, uh, if you remember, uh, the way I selected which rows contain the collision data, uh, I used the uh, rows that were like this pattern. So, in this case, I treat everything else where row is not like that uh, as collision metadata. Uh, then I'm not going to go into details here, but I'm doing some tricks uh, to... Um, um, let's see, what am I doing here anyway? Yeah, I'm probably aggregating those into a single row. Uh, then I use uh, regular expression patterns to pick out the different things that I want from that metadata, like the month and the year here. And there's also something, a calculation here. Uh, I forgot to mention that. You have terms uh, that you can have in your, we only have terms here in this part, but you can also have calculations. Uh, and the calculation, the difference is that a term must be present in the source file, whereas a calculation is something that you create. So it's sort of like a computed column um, in the database. And that's the end of that calculation. And finally, there's some notes here. So while we have this one open, we can actually I'm gonna save this one before I forget. Uh, and while we have the source open, let's look at one of the data files and see what they look like. So apparently this is what they look like. Uh, interesting format. So you can see here, there, there's definitely some header data here. And um, this looks like it's also the name of the column, so the terms that we call them. Uh, and then you have the actual collision data here. You can see that there was a collision um, second place and uh, Little West 12th Street. Uh, so you have the intersecting street and the crossing street. So here's a lot of collisions in Manhattan. Let's move down, 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 down to the very end. Oh, and as, yeah, you can see here at the end, there's also some other metadata. If you try to uh, load this using uh, SSIS or a regular bulk insert, uh, SQL Server will, will most likely complain. It doesn't really like files in which the structure differs between the rows. So, but it works really well with our framework. So, that's the description of the source uh, that we have. So, let's see. And also I have this uh, run all script where I change it to traffic. So in the next video, we are going to look at creating the necessary databases. We're going to run the framework uh, and we're going to actually load some data. And then we're going to look at some other files here and see what they do as well. So see you in the next video.